First Story by David Mitchell My friends and I had decided to embark on a spontaneous road trip to the Smoky Mountains. With no particular destination in mind, we found ourselves deep in the heart of the forest, surrounded by towering trees and the eerie silence of the night. As we drove along the winding road, our laughter and banter filled the car. The headlights cut through the darkness, casting eerie shadows that danced among the trees. It was a beautiful night, and we were relishing the sense of adventure. But our excitement was short-lived. Up ahead, we saw a figure standing by the side of the road, partially obscured by the shadows. We slowed down as we approached, and our merriment turned to unease. The stranger was dressed in ragged clothing and appeared disheveled, like someone who had been wandering in the wilderness for days. As we passed by, I stole a glance at him through the window, and our eyes locked for a brief moment. His expression was blank, but something about his gaze sent a chill down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something off about him. We continued down the road but the atmosphere inside the car had changed. The once lively chatter had turned to a tense silence. We couldn't help but wonder what the stranger was doing out here in the middle of the night, so far from civilization. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed through the forest, causing us all to jump in our seats. The car's engine sputtered, and the headlights flickered before dying completely. Panic set in as we realized we were stranded in the darkness of the forest with no way to continue our journey. I fumbled for my phone and turned on the flashlight, casting a feeble beam into the surrounding woods. In the dim light, I saw the stranger approaching us, his steps slow and deliberate. He wore a sinister grin that sent shivers down my spine. With no other options, we all got out of the car our hearts pounding with fear. The stranger drew nearer, and his laughter filled the air, echoing through the trees. He seemed unhinged, and we didn't know what he was capable of. As he reached us, he produced a knife from his pocket, the blade glinting in the faint light. We stood frozen, our minds racing with terror. He made it clear that he wanted something from us and there was no escaping the dire situation we had found ourselves in. Hours passed, and the forest seemed to close in around us as we remained at the mercy of the menacing stranger. It was a nightmarish ordeal, and I couldn't help but wonder if we would make it out of the forest alive. Second Story by Lisa Anderson I had always been drawn to the solitude of the wilderness, and my backpacking trips in Northern California were a way for me to disconnect from the chaos of everyday life. But one night, deep in the remote woods, my love for adventure turned into a chilling encounter. The sun had set, and I had set up my campsite near a small creek. The sound of rushing water and the rustling leaves filled the air as I cooked my dinner over a campfire. Everything seemed perfect, until I heard distant voices coming from the woods. I strained my ears, trying to make out what was being said. The voices were low and murmured, and a sense of unease washed over me. I couldn't see anyone, but the voices were growing closer, and I realized they were heading in my direction. I quickly doused my campfire and retreated into the shadows of the forest my heart pounding with fear. I watched in silence as a group of people emerged from the trees. They were dressed in dark clothing and carried backpacks, but something about their presence felt sinister. They approached my campsite and began rummaging through my belongings, their laughter sending chills down my spine. I couldn't understand their motives, but it was clear they had ill intentions. I stayed hidden, trying to control my breathing and stay as still as possible. The group continued to rifle through my gear, taking items that I had worked hard to pack for my trip. They showed no remorse, 
their actions driven by a cold, calculated greed. As they made their way through my campsite, one of them, a tall and menacing figure, spotted my backpack hidden in the shadows. He approached it and began to unzip the bag, revealing my precious belongings. I watched in horror as he pulled out a small knife and cut through the straps, effectively ruining my backpack. With their loot in tow, the group retreated back into the forest, leaving my campsite in disarray. I waited until I was certain they were gone before emerging from my hiding spot. My heart sank as I surveyed the damage they had done. I was left alone in the dark woods with a ruined backpack and a feeling of vulnerability that I had never experienced before. I knew I had to leave the area as quickly as possible, but the memory of that chilling encounter would haunt my wilderness adventures for years to come. Third Story by Michael Turner my friends and I had decided to escape the hustle and bustle of Portland for a weekend camping trip in the woods of Oregon. We set up our tents in a secluded clearing, surrounded by the tall pines and the soothing sounds of nature. Little did we know, our idyllic trip would soon turn into a nightmare. The first night was peaceful, and we gathered around the campfire, sharing stories and laughter. But as the darkness deepened, a sense of unease settled over the group. We felt as though we were being watched, and every rustling leaf or snapping twig sent us into a state of heightened alertness. As we settled into our tents for the night, we couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was lurking in the shadows. The sounds of the forest took on a sinister tone, and sleep eluded us. The next morning, we discovered that our campsite had been tampered with. Our food supplies had been ransacked, and our belongings had been scattered around the clearing. It was clear that we were not alone in the woods. Determined to salvage our trip, we decided to explore the area, hoping to find the source of our unease. As we hiked deeper into the forest, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. We couldn't shake the eerie sensation that eyes were constantly on us. Hours passed, and we came across a makeshift shelter hidden among the trees. It was a crude structure made of branches and leaves, and it sent a shiver down our spines. Someone had been living out here, in the heart of the wilderness. We decided to leave the area and return to our campsite but it was clear that our presence had not gone unnoticed. As we retraced our steps, we heard footsteps behind us, slow and deliberate. Panic set in as we realized we were being followed by an unseen stalker. We quickened our pace, our hearts pounding with fear. The footsteps grew closer, and we could feel the presence of our pursuer closing in. We dared not turn around, for fear of what we might see. Just as we reached our campsite, the stalker revealed themselves. A figure emerged from the trees, clad in tattered clothing and wearing a twisted grin. It was a man, his eyes filled with madness and malice. He approached us, his words a sinister whisper in the stillness of the forest. He claimed that these woods were his domain, and he would not tolerate intruders. He brandished a knife, and we knew we were in grave danger. We had no choice but to flee, abandoning our campsite and all of our gear. We ran through the forest, our hearts in our throats, until we reached a nearby trailhead where we were able to call for help. As we waited for the authorities to arrive, we couldn't help but wonder what had driven that man to live a life of solitude in the woods and what horrors he may have committed in his isolation. Our camping trip had turned into a chilling ordeal that would forever haunt our memories. Fourth Story by Sarah Lewis I had always found solace in the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains, and one night, I decided to embark on a late-night hike through a dense forest in the heart of West Virginia. 
Little did I know that my peaceful adventure would take a terrifying turn. The moon cast a silvery glow on the trail ahead as I made my way deeper into the woods. The only sound was the gentle rustling of leaves and the occasional hoot of an owl. It was a tranquil night, and I felt a sense of serenity enveloping me. But as I continued my hike, I noticed something unusual. Strange symbols carved into the bark of trees. They were intricate and unfamiliar, and they seemed to lead deeper into the forest. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to follow the trail of symbols. The symbols led me to a small clearing, where I discovered a circle of stones arranged in a peculiar pattern. In the center of the circle was a small fire, its flames dancing eerily in the darkness. The air was thick with the scent of burning herbs, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I had stumbled upon something otherworldly. I watched in awe as figures emerged from the shadows, their faces obscured by masks and cloaks. They moved with a deliberate and unsettling grace, their movements synchronized as they chanted in a language I couldn't understand. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, and I felt a deep sense of unease. As I continued to observe, a sense of dread settled over me. The chanting grew louder, and the flames of the fire seemed to dance with malevolent intent. I realized that I was witnessing a ritual of some kind, but the purpose behind it remained a chilling mystery. Suddenly, the figures turned their attention toward me, their eyes gleaming from behind their masks. Panic surged through me, and I turned to flee but the forest seemed to have transformed. The once familiar trail had disappeared, and I was surrounded by a labyrinth of trees and darkness. I stumbled through the woods, my heart pounding with fear. Unsettling sounds echoed around me, whispers, laughter, and the eerie rustling of leaves. I couldn't escape the feeling that I was being pursued by unseen forces. Hours passed, and I eventually emerged from the forest, disoriented and shaken. I had no idea where I was or how I had found my way out, but I knew I had narrowly escaped a sinister presence in those dark woods. To this day, I can't explain the symbols, the ritual, or the strange sensations I experienced during that night hike. The memory haunts me, A reminder that even the most serene and familiar places can hide unsettling secrets. Fifth Story by James Carter The Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York had always been a favorite destination for my friends and me. We had embarked on countless camping trips in those rugged woods, but one fateful night would change our perception of the wilderness forever. The night was clear, and the stars shone brightly overhead as we set up our campsite beside a pristine lake. The tranquil surroundings filled us with a sense of adventure, and we couldn't wait to spend the night under the open sky. As we sat around the campfire, swapping stories and laughter, we heard an unsettling noise in the distance, a low, guttural growl that seemed to emanate from the depths of the forest. We exchanged nervous glances, but none of us wanted to admit that we were unnerved. The growling continued, growing louder and more menacing. It was accompanied by the snapping of branches and the rustling of leaves, as though something large and powerful was approaching our campsite. Panic set in as we realized that we were not alone in the wilderness. We grabbed our flashlights and scanned the darkness but we saw nothing. The growling seemed to be coming from all directions, as though the very forest itself was alive with ominous sounds. Just as we were debating whether to pack up and leave, we heard a blood-curdling scream from one of our friends. We turned our flashlights in his direction and saw him standing frozen, his eyes wide with terror. He pointed to something in the woods, but our beams of light revealed only darkness. Whatever it was, it had disappeared into the night, leaving us shaken and on edge. 
We decided to stay close to the campfire, our flashlights trained on the surrounding trees, but the sense of unease never left us. Hours passed, and the growling and unsettling noises continued, as though some malevolent force was toying with us. We huddled together, our hearts pounding, and wondered if we were being watched by something far more sinister than we had ever encountered in the wilderness. Dawn finally broke, and we packed up our campsite and left the Adirondack Mountains behind. We couldn't explain the series of terrifying events that had unfolded that night, but one thing was clear. Our love for the wilderness had been forever tainted by the memory of that chilling camping trip. Thank you for sticking with us through the whole video. Also, I recommend you this video you see on screen, one of the scariest on my channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. This helps me bring you more thrilling content every day. If this video sent shivers down your spine, let me know in the comments.